Hey guys, it's Dr. Hawkins. Uh, week six, chapter six, wrapping up with a little bit of polarity. I skipped polarity in week five only because I knew it was going to be in week six as well. So it's introduced in five, but really focused on in six. When it comes to polarity, we're dealing with covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are shared electrons, and we're going to find out pretty quickly that they're not shared so equally. So what's unique about shared electrons is sometimes you have two atoms that bully one another based on electronegativity. Electronegativity is this table we'll get on every exam. It basically points to the biggest bully, fluorine, saying if you're attached to fluorine, you can almost say goodbye to your electrons because it's going to take them. It's kind of like saying that if we put two electrons between two atoms, who's going to take them? They're both going to share, but it's kind of like Here's a Christmas present, and here's two siblings. Who's going to get to play with that Christmas uh, toy first? Who's going to open that present first? And it's always going to be the bigger bully. The bigger bully is always the higher number. So most often in class, we're going to use these numbers up here in hydrogen. The rest of the table is irrelevant for us in intricate. So we're going to be using these guys in this upper corner, these nonmetals, and then we're going to be using hydrogen and comparing. And when we do this, we just subtract and look for that difference. So if we subtract and we get a uh, 0.5 or larger difference in electronegativity, when that happens, we're going to say this is a polar covalent bond. If we are less than 0.5 in difference, Again, in electronegativity from that table, we're going to now say this is a nonpolar covalent bond. And that was really what we were looking for in uh, week five, chapter five. As we look at week, uh, week six, chapter six, we're saying use those same rules, but now let's look at a molecule. So if we have oxygen to hydrogen to hydrogen, what does that mean for its polarity of, in this case, water? Well, remember it has two bonds, two lone pairs. One of those is forward, one of those is backwards. Less important for this idea to understand that, but what is important is this is bent together at 105 degrees. It's not straight, it's not linear. If we look at electronegativity, we see that oxygen is a 3.5. We see that hydrogen is a 2.1. So if we have a 2.1 here, a 2.1 here, and a 3.5 there, what does that mean for the molecule itself? Well, it means that the difference here is a dipole, which means the direction of the polarity, that's a 1.4 dipole, that is significantly higher than the 0.5 we needed. So this is a polar covalent bond. Here we have 3.5 to 2.1 again, so that's another 1.4, so this is a polar covalent bond. Since they work together in that overall up direction through oxygen, we would call this a polar molecule. And that's really the difference between the two chapters. Recognizing if these bonds are polar is week five. Recognizing if the molecule based on its shape, which is bent from the tetrahedral category of shape, represents a polar molecule is week six, chapter six. So let's try a few more examples, but that's really the basic idea of this one. A couple that we want to worry about would be, let's say, hydrocarbons. We'll see those. So if you see a hydrocarbon, um, we have those hydrogens forward here and reverse there. This is our tetrahedral molecule, so again, a 109.5 degree angle there. If you look at electronegativity, carbon is a 2.5, hydrogen still a 2.1. It's one bond at a time. So the difference here is a 0 0.4. It's also a 0 0.4. It's also 0 0.4, 0 0.4. So all of these are 0 0.4. Our definition was either 0.5 or larger or less. If it's less, it's nonpolar. So you'll stay nonpolar because there's no dipoles. There's no direction of any bullies. They're sharing somewhat equally enough to be nonpolar. And this is why oil and water do not mix. Water being very electronegative feels negative. So we show this partial charge, it looks like a lowercase delta in the Greek alphabet. These hydrogens feel positive, so partial positive, 
partial positive. And notice oil like molecules like these hydrocarbons don't have any of that partial positive negative charges, so they're not polar. Water is so polar that you can touch your key fob up to your neck and extend the range of your uh, signal to your car to either start it or to open, open the doors or whatever, open the lock. It's also polar enough that if you hold your metal cell phone that you can extend the range of your cell phone. All because these water molecules in your body can act as an antenna for that electricity from the aluminum case on your phone. The problem is when people buy cell phones, what they do first is put a silicon rubber case over top of it which insulates the phone. So if you want to get better service, if you're stuck out in the woods, take off your case, hold it, and let these molecules use their polarity to give you more signal. That's what they were designed for um, in the first place with a metal case. Let's try another example. Uh, a couple examples to watch out for is this one. Here's carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has a linear shape and that's the problem. When you have a linear shape, guess what happens? So we saw these electronegativities a moment ago. Oxygen was a 3.5. 3.5 and what happens in this case is carbon is a 2.5 so when you think of the dipole that exists we have this bully oxygen at 3.5 that's a 1.0 pull to the right but you also have by shape an equal and opposite pull of 1.0 to the left so even though we have very polar double bonds based on week 5 so these are polar covalent bonds based on our definition of 0.5 or larger this is double that however that's irrelevant because of the dipole tug of war this is a two-way tie and this is a nonpolar molecule by shape so nonpolar is what we're worried about when there's a two-way tie so this two-way tie is everywhere in the homework, so watch out for it. Carbon dioxide is used so often, it's almost used in every single question just to keep you honest on your shape. So other ones to watch out for would be SO3. I'm not gonna work it out, but you can imagine sulfur at 2.5, these oxygens at 3.5, now we have a three-way tie, nobody wins. So because of sulfur trioxide's trigonal planar shape, it's also gonna be nonpolar. So watch out for CO2 as a two-way tie, watch out for um, SO3 is a three-way tie. And even though I didn't make the model kit, you can imagine it with this one. If these hydrogens were instead chlorines, we'd get carbon tetrachloride, which is a firebomb. You throw it on fire and it sucks all the oxygen out of the air. Actually, even though it's highly flammable, um, makes the fire go out because it eats up all the oxygen. But because of its nonpolarity, it's gonna hate things like water. Because even though this bond from carbon at 2.5 to pretend this is chlorine at 3.0, this is a 0.5, this is a 0.5, this is a 0.5, this is a 0.5. Nobody wins. That's a four-way tie if these are chlorines. So watch out for CO2, SO3, and CCL4. Those are the ones that are nonpolar given their shape. If you just do the subtraction, you're going to get 1.0, 1.0, and 0.5, and they're going to look polar. But they're in every single homework question. Sometimes two of them are, sometimes all three of them are. They're in there for a reason, because shape and polarity can work against each other, and they do when there's a two-way tie, three-way tie, or four-way tie. So watch out for those. Uh, use your electronegativity table. This guy is your friend. Find two, subtract. 0.5 or larger is what we're after. And then after that, uh, think about shape. And only CO2, SO3, CCO4 are what you have to worry about. See you next time.